Namaste, angels. This is the weekly general reading for the period of tomorrow, May 24th through Saturday to come, May 30th. We're going to get right into it. Thank you, everybody, for coming, for sharing, liking, subscribing, supporting in many of the ways that you do, any and all the ways that you do, the donations, um, any of the orders. I have not been dry, <laughs> for lack of a better word, not busy at any point during all of this. I have been busy, busy, busy. You guys keep me working and I thank you. Um, there's something coming up that I'm a little excited about on the Divine Girl Talk page. We're having like an online get together on the 28th, Thursday, the 28th at 7 p.m. We have room for 50 people to be on the call with us. It's a, a video call uh, through Facebook Messenger. There's nothing to download. You don't even have to have Messenger. Uh, Yvonne is going to send out the link or has already sent out the link or posted the link. And people are going to take that link and get on the call. Again, there's only 50 slots, so it will have to be, you know, like first come, first serve. I have, you know, several thousand viewers, supporters, subscribers. Um, obviously, we're not going to get to them all. I went ahead and put a couple of dollars into boosting the post, you know, so basically advertising so that some of you would see it with the way that my channel gets, you know, blocked by everybody. It's funny. I was watching uh, this guy named Bobby earlier. He has a show called Bobby's Perspective on YouTube. And, um, you know, he was just talking about how people had been like flagging his, his videos and his channel and like trying to get him removed. And, you know, there was a time where I went through that, where my videos would get reported several times per day. And I, I definitely think, you know, that it has, um, um, or had a major impact and a lot to do with through what I'm going now, you know, and I know a lot of people are going through it with YouTube's algorithm, the problems and stuff. But I, I think because I just kept getting like, even if it was only temporary, taken off of YouTube, my videos will get taken down. They have to get put back up later or they get blocked. People will be writing me, Queen, I can't see the video and all kinds of foolishness. And I think that that led up to, you know, to what I'm dealing with now. So, so that you guys would know about it, I went ahead and um, boosted the posts that... Um, she put up on the page. So hopefully you'll see it and, you know, we'll get some people in. I know some of you have already RSVP'd. As part of that, there's also going to be a um, live drawing for a reading with me. The tickets are being sold, uh, you know, lottery tickets for uh, $3 a piece. And you can get them from my PayPal link, which is paypal.me slash um, Queen of Swords, no, no, I'm sorry, paypal.me slash Queen of Swords 99. And um, that link is also posted so you don't have to get it from, from what I just said. You can buy as many tickets as you want and, you know, she's going to pull the name and call the name on the live call in front of everybody. So we'll see who won or learn who won that night. All right, so let's get into this because we got a lot to discuss. It is a busy week. Beginning with tomorrow, Sunday, um, is both a feast day on the Christian calendar and a feast day on the Muslim or Islamic calendar. So I'll just begin with Christian Christianity. It is the feast day of Mary, help of Christians. And for this, I just went to wikipedia.org. Mary, help of Christians, or in Spanish, Nuestra Señora María Auxiliadora de los Cristianos is a Roman Catholic Marian devotion with a feast day that's celebrated on May 24th. St. John Chrysostom was the first person to use this Marian title in the year 345 as a devotion to the Virgin Mary. Don Bosco also propagated Marian devotion under this title. The title of Mary Help of Christians is associated with the defense of Christian Europe, Latin and Greek, as well as the north of Africa and the Middle East from non-Christian peoples during the Middle Ages. 
1572, so I should have pointed out, as I typically do, the feast day is the 24th, which equals six, which of course is one of Mary's numbers. And as I've mentioned before, her numbers are six, nine, 13. Um, and so now we have 1572, the year is both six and nine. So in 1572, during the expansion of the Islamic Ottoman Empire intended to invade Christian Europe, Pope Pius V invoked Christian armies and its victory achieved was consequently attributed to the intercession of Mary under this title. Ultimately, Pope Leo XIII granted a coronation toward the Marian image bearing the same title on the 17th of May in 1903, which is 1313, right? Because May is five, the 17 is eight, five plus eight is 13, 1903 is 10 and three also equals 13. Now it's permanently enshrined with the Basilica of Mary, help of Christians. So that was that day. For Muslims tomorrow, May 24th, or actually beginning today at sundown, um, it's seven o'clock. I don't know if you just heard the noise outside my window. Um, my window is closed, but some of the clapping and stuff still comes when we honor and, the, and all the sirens and everything when we honor the healthcare workers. But although it's seven o'clock PM Eastern standard time, the sun has not yet gone down. Once it does go down, we'll begin the feast day of Eid al-Fitr on the Muslim or Islamic calendar which is the day that we break fast from Ramadan, right? All during the month of Ramadan, people have been fasting until after sundown and no food, no water, no nothing. And um, Eid is the one day during that month that you are like not allowed to fast. Like you must, you know, celebrate and, and eat and have a good time. For this too, I've just gone to wikipedia.org Eid al fitr is also called the Festival of Breaking the Fast, and it's a religious holiday celebrated by Muslims worldwide that marks the end of the month-long dawn-to-sunset fasting of Ramadan. This religious Eid is the only day in the month of Shawwal during which Muslims are not permitted to fast. So everything I just said is what they said, what they're saying. I guess I didn't need this, sorry. <laughs> um, that's what they have to say about Eid marks the end of Ramadan. And that brings us to the end of the week and the end of the month to what will be celebrated by both Christians and Jews around the world, the Feast of the Pentecost. But it begins on Friday, the 29th for Jews, because similar to Muslims, they begin their holidays or feast days the evening before at sundown. So we're starting on Friday the 29th for this celebration of, of Shavuot, which is basically the Pentecost. But I will read um, from, did I, did I pull up a page for Shabbat.org? Oh, it looks like I have Wikipedia for this too. Okay. Usually I go to www.shabbat.org. I don't know why I didn't. I hadn't even noticed that I hadn't. In any case, we're on Wikipedia. So Shavuot is what? Known as the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost, it is a Jewish holiday that occurs on the sixth day of the Hebrew month of Sivan, meaning that it may fall between any time between May 15th and June 14th. Shavuot has a double significance. It marked the all-important wheat harvest in the land of Israel. It can be found in Exodus 34:22, and it also commemorates the anniversary of the day when God gave the Torah to the nation of Israel assembled at Mount, at Mount Sinai. And that's, um, it doesn't say that here, but if I remember correctly, this is year 3,300, 3,300 since then, or like master number 33. Um, and this is the Jewish year 1441. No, it's the Muslim year 1441. It's the Jewish year um, 5,780. Anyway, this feast day, um, the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost, Pentecost or Shavuot, marks both the wheat harvest that they were celebrating in Israel and the day or the period when God is said to have given the Jews the Torah on Mount Sinai, right? Their holy book. 
to all that were assembled there to receive it. So although this association is not explicit in the biblical text between the giving of the Torah and Shavuot, the holiday is one of the three pilgrimage festivals of the Bible. The word Shavuot means weeks, and it marks the conclusion of the counting of the Omer. So I've been talking about that every week too since Easter, saying that in Hebrew practice or Jewish practice, we count the days of the Omer. In Christian practice, we continue with the um, days of the Easter octave, and both ultimately lead up to the Pentecost. So that's what's happening now. All right. So it's about the conclusion of the counting of the Omer and its date is directly linked to that of Passover. The Torah mandates that the seven week counting of the Omer beginning on the second day of Passover to be immediately followed by Shavuot. This counting of days and weeks is understood to express anticipation and desire for the giving of the Torah. On Passover, the people of Israel were freed from their enslavement to Pharaoh on Shavuot they were given the Torah and became a nation committed to serving God. The king, the, yeah, I'm sorry, the Yarzit of King David is traditionally observed on Shavuot. Hasidic Jews also observe the Yarzit of the Baal Shem Tov. I think that was um, some kind of healer or something, if I remember correctly. It doesn't say here. Anyway, um, but if you want to look it up, it's B-A-A-L, one word, Shem, S-H-E-M, that's the second word, Tov, T-O-V. Shavuot is one of the less familiar Jewish holidays to secular Jews in the Jewish diaspora, while those in Israel and the Orthodox community are more aware of it. According to Jewish law, Shavuot is celebrated in Israel for one day and in the diaspora for two days. Reform Judaism celebrates only one day, even in the diaspora. So we're going to move on from the Abrahamic religions to what's going on in the celestial calendar or the planetary calendar, beginning with, what do we got here? May 26th at 1051 PM, Juno, the asteroid, goes direct uh, in Libra. It's been retrograde in Libra since like February, if I remember correctly, because we would have talked about it then. But I think it's been since February. All right. So for that, I clicked on something random. And it is a page or a website called spiritnow.com. And they have an article here about the Juno retrograde. What to expect when Juno goes direct is what it's called. Um, is there an author's name here? No, not that I see. But that's the page. It's not my page. Anyway, Juno is an asteroid that is notoriously influential on relationships. This is named after the Roman hearth goddess, also known as Hera. So she was like the queen of all the goddesses, right? Uh, Zeus's wife. And what Juno is doing can have quite an impact on relationships. On November 3rd, this asteroid moves forward after being retrograde since August 10th. Okay, this is something old. She's not talking about this particular time that it went retrograde, I guess. But let's see what she has to say about um, Juno going direct in general. The reason this is significant is because Juno symbolizes committed relationships and all of the things that go with time, including abuse, infidelity, fertility, marriage, domesticality, and divorce. Well, these are all different things that I've been talking about over the past few weeks. A lot of this, uh, I talked about cheating, and I think I even had some title about like needing to choose one person versus the other, or wanting to choose... So all of these things have definitely been coming up for us, even though she's talking about another time when, I don't know what year, when uh, Juno had been retrograde. I talked about abuse and needing to get away from some sort of narcissist and jealousy and all this kind of stuff over the past few weeks. So this is sounding very familiar to me. And I guess those of you who, who have been watching me on those occasions. Anyway. Uh, Juno is also very symbolic of jealousy. Oh. 
<laughs> okay, there you go. She's also very symbolic of jealousy and issues to do with spurned wives. I've been talking about that too. The need to perhaps even like leave a mate, you know, flat out to my, to whom you're married. Um, in Greek mythology, she was the eternally faithful to her constantly unfaithful husband, Zeus. When this asteroid shifts at all, whether it is going backward or forward in the sky, we can expect to see a lot more storms and earthquakes. We've been seeing that too. And in my, in my Patreon readings, I've been talking about like, have you guys been noticing that all these things are happening on the same day? What was one that was particularly interesting for me was that on May 19th, which was Martin, uh, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X's birthday, um, May 19th, I had been excited and I, I mentioned it to you guys at least like two weeks prior. I was like, I can't wait to, to mention it then. I got to tell you now because it, it excites me. I don't know if it's going to excite you guys or not, but the night of power, which is like the holiest night of Ramadan, lands on Malcolm's birthday. I'm getting chills in my legs. I thought that was really special. And, um, you know, so I, have, I, I was looking forward to it and I was excited. But also what happened on that day was that uh, India experienced a, a huge storm, uh, like colossal storm. A million people needed to run for cover and like, you know, lock up in their homes and stuff. A million people. And then um, also on the same day in Michigan, their levees broke. Now these levees had been, um, uh, you know, like in, uh, inspected back in like 2018 and found to be, have been faulty, but weren't changed. And they broke and, you know, parts of Michigan flooded as if these people need any more, any more problems. I mean, they've been dealing with bad water in, in places like Flint and other counties too, not, not just there, you know, for years. It's literally years now. Um, so I don't know. I, 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 I stopped to think about it for a second. And, you know, maybe you guys want to, some of you want to think about it too. Um, I just wondered if there was a connection to all of it um, and maybe some sort of energetic attack or something. And maybe it was tied to this, to Juno and like the, the, the spurning and stuff um, could very well have been. Anyway, I'll move on with this. So it says during a, a Juno retrograde, you can expect to see a lot more of this um, storms and earthquakes. Also earthquakes. A lot of people have been reporting they felt quakes and stuff um, the past like week or so. Anyway, if you watch the news around well, she's giving dates, so we'll skip that. But if you, you, if you watch the news, I'll put it that way, you'll probably see more news of natural disasters and environmental accidents, as well as news about domestic disputes that end in a fatality. We've been definitely been seeing a lot of that, too. And I posted one on my Facebook um, that occurred this week. This guy killed his ex-girlfriend, her two daughters, and himself. He should have just killed himself. Anyway, if you're in a good relationship, it will get better when Juno goes direct. But if you have been cheating or lying, you'll probably get caught <laughs> at that time. Well, that's nice for those um, to whom it's been happening. It's nice that they'll be able to catch these people and, and you, know, you know, make them face the music somehow. Relationships that are parental in nature, smothering or codependent, often are shaken up during any type of movement with Juno in the sky. If you're in a toxic relationship, it's likely to break up, especially if there is infidelity involved. When this asteroid first went retrograde, well, she's talking about how it was in Aries, so that doesn't apply to us either. It has since gone through several signs, and on this occasion, it ended up in Aquarius. I don't think there's anything else for us here. This, no, there's not. And... She was talking about how it affects each sign, but that may be specific to the fact that it was in, um, you know, wherever it was located at that time, this November that she's talking about. I'll read Gemini's and you can, not because I'm a Gemini, um, I, although I am, but because, you know, it's you guys um, or our um, you know, like birthday month or, or time period, our season. It's our season. That's what I meant to say. Uh, so I'll read this and maybe some people will connect with it. And the others, if you want to read them again, I, you know, I'm on uh, a Web page called spiritnow.com. 
And the name of the article is What to Expect When Juno Goes Direct. Gemini, when Juno goes direct, you'll see the return of a lover or an ex into your life. I've been talking a lot about that too. It is possible that this person is apologetic. As Juno rules wives, many female Geminis may be receiving a marriage proposal. If a relationship has recently gone sour because of the meddling from some older woman that the person is like that person is likely to be exposed as a gossip. I've been talking a lot about that too. I'd say that can come through in the form of somebody's like mother, mother-in-law, I, 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 all of this stuff. I mean, you guys that have been watching, you know, I don't have to tell you anyway, this forward motion will also likely have the effect of to free you from any stifling or smothering relationships. Okay. So let's see. Hopefully that all will come true. And I think that's all we're going to talk about. I'm sorry. Forgive me. That's not all. On May 28th. Oh, the day that we're going to, the day we're going to do the, um, the call. Mercury, speaking of calls and communication, Mercury, the communication planet enters cancer. Zero degrees Mercury, zero cancer at 2.09 p.m. 11. Very interesting. Very nice. Um, so right now, Mercury is in Gemini, which it rules. Venus is in Gemini, which it rules. Retrograde. The sun is in Gemini. The moon is in Gemini. The true north node is in Gemini. So a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, but Mercury will be leaving at the end of the week. All right. So let's see what tarot.com because that's where I went for this, has to say about Mercury in Cancer. Deep, sensitive, considerate. Mercury is the planet that rules our thoughts, ideas, and the way that we communicate with others. It's the planet of the mind. But the zodiac sign Cancer is all about feelings. Therefore, when Mercury enters this sentimental sign, his sharp, logical edges are softened, offering us an opportunity to understand and communicate our emotions more directly. We have a real chance to get closer to others during this transit because we're willing to hear and to share things that are more personal than usual. Mercury in Cancer encourages us to contemplate and discuss the things that make us feel most vulnerable, helping us to find greater understanding in ourselves and strengthening the bonds of our relationships. The mind and the heart grow closer while Mercury travels through Cancer. We think about things on a deeper level during this transit, and we have greater ability to process and express our feelings. Mercury in Cancer gives us a chance to communicate with a softer touch, become more intimate, and to share ourselves more personally with others. Cancer the Crab is focused on all the things that make us feel comfortable, safe, and loved. When the planet of communication is in this sign, it's easier to connect lovingly with others. We want our family, friends, and loved ones to know that they are loved. And we find it easy to express the most caring and protective sides of ourselves when Mercury is in Cancer. During Mercury's transit through Cancer, we should open our minds to the messages that we receive from our intuition. As a water sign, Cancer has very acute intuition. Mercury's dance through Cancer doesn't erase Mercury's usual logic, but it expands it to include instincts and gut feelings. I was feeling something about gut feelings, and that's why I grabbed a yellow candle, you know, like the solar plexus, the gut, from where we get our messages. Yeah, that's the way my mind works. Don't, don't ask. <laughs> so we're going to be expanded to, or logical be expanded to include instincts and gut feelings, information that cannot be put into words. This time gives us a heightened ability to draw necessary insights from sources that you don't always have access to. It has been said that the biggest communication problem we humans have is that we do not listen to understand. We listen to reply. But that's not the case with Mercury and Cancer. During this transit, we care enough to stop talking and to start listening. Even silence can be full of meaning now. Mercury in Cancer is a reminder that real listening is done with the heart as well as with the ears. 
one of my favorite types of communication is the type that does not include words, although I am very much a Gemini and several times over I'm a Gemini, like in several different placements, but I love communication without words. All right. So that moves us into the reading. Let's get started. Um, all right. So with the Ascendant Masters deck here, we're beginning with clear and shield your energy, El Moria. So important to protect that. A lot of you doing that right now. Um, again, like I said, I've been getting orders. Um, a lot of divine light cleanses and stuff happening. Take charge of this situation, says Moses. And this period that we're talking again, you know, 3,300 years ago, supposedly Moses was, um, you know, or had just led the Jews to their Jews and some Egyptians to their freedom from the Pharaoh. So interesting that he's showing up here. Yoga is also upright. It is the last one and Babaji. So maybe meditation and, um, perhaps it's con connected to the communication stuff. Very, very possible with the, uh, angel and animal tarots, major arcana card 15 ego or the devil, which represents the sign of Capricorn. Um, where Pluto currently is and is retrograde Pluto, one of the rulers of the sign of Scorpio. Also Jupiter, the daddy of all planets, the ruler of the sign of Sagittarius, also located in Capricorn currently. A false sense of entrapment, being overly focused on material things and negative or fear-based thoughts. With my Keepers of the Light Oracle, Diana and focused intention. Think about what you desire, set your sights high and expect the best possible outcome. And I was just looking at this and saying that this looks like the 10 of wands to me. And I forgot we, we actually do have the 10 of wands sitting here. Um, the 10 of wands in the right away deck all about, um, you know, wanting to lay down our burdens, maybe, maybe just being tired having so much on our plate, being so busy and just needing a break. And, you know, that could be the case too. We are, for um, those of us in the United States, we celebrate Memorial Day or Memorial Weekend this weekend. And some of you may be taking a break. Even those of you considered essential workers are perhaps off, um, at least some of you, because it is a federal holiday. So it can be that too. Like sometimes we're just, we're so successful. That can be what the 10 of wands means too. It's not always like, um, you know, just like a, Oh, uh, what was me? Like, I gotta, I gotta, you know, stop this. Sometimes it's like, we were just so successful we, that we have tons going on and it's just becomes too much for a person. And, you know, even too much of a good thing can end up being a bad thing and, you know, putting a stress on your, on your body and on your mind, on your emotions, and you just need a break. So that can be what that's about too. But we're going to get into all the cards and see how they work together right now. Let me just move this out the way for a minute. I still have my bag of candles here. Um, but the dice are beginning with sex. It's 50-50. Which can be tied to this, uh, the 10 of wands can also be about a need for balance and also a need for like give and take and 50, 50 and you carry some and I'll carry some. Uh, neither one of us should have to be, you know, to be made to carry a burden by ourselves alone. Um, this could be us splitting some sort of bill. It can be connected to the sex, we, you know, it could be tied to give and take, um, maybe a date or something and going Dutch as they say, you, you know, you pay for yours, I'll pay for mine or we'll split the bill down the middle. And those types of things. And the last one is cocktail. And Spirit says, yes. Twenty nine spiritual partnership. And weekend away. 
As I mentioned, it is uh, Memorial Weekend in the United States. And some of us, if we're not actually going away somewhere, we may just be stepping away from all of the stuff that we normally carry, right? And taking a break, maybe to go to the beach or like in New York, the beaches are open. Um, we can't get in the water. There's no lifeguards. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but the beaches themselves are open. Um, so people are doing that and having like social distancing barbecues and stuff. You know, people are having to, having to get creative. What, you know, what are you, you going to do? What are you going to say? What are you going to do? I'll just mention the world in reverse. And the world is sort of turned upside down right now, isn't it? World in Reverse um, is what is behind this Ten of Wands that is upright. Um, you know what? Let me just do this because I'm curious. Um, well, never mind. Well, I started now. I was going to say, like, should I talk about them? I'm curious if I should talk about what the Ten of Wands in Reverse means and stuff or continuing with, continue with what I was doing here. So I had started to put the cards upside down so that I could talk about the Ten of Wands. I'm torn. Should I? Um, not the Ten of Wands, the World in Reverse, but I keep saying the Ten of Wands because they're very closely related. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So <laughs> the World in Reverse um, is almost like, ex almost exactly what I was saying about the Ten of Wands um, upright. But the world, of course, is a stronger energy. It's what we, what we, or at least I, would call a karmic energy, as in of the universe. Like the Minor Arcana cards we have more control over them, in my opinion. Like, we can um, allow whatever energy comes up in them to um, affect us, not affect us, and sometimes to not even take place. Like, we can totally change the energy and change what happens um, and certainly affect the outcome. But with the karmic energies, we can't stop them from coming. We're still in control. We still have free will and we're still in control of our actions and our reactions, but we can't stop them from coming. So it's all about how we navigate those situations. And so that's why, um, that's what makes the world in reverse a little bit different than the Ten of Wands. But ultimately, uh, it too is about the fact that we may have, you know, we probably have been working very, very hard on something or, or just in general, just our lives and like, Whatever we've been trying to accomplish or whatever goals we've been trying to reach or meet or uh, phases in our lives that maybe even, you know, they're not conscious thoughts. It's just um, different times in one's life that um, are, need to come to an end because we've completed that section, uh, even if we did it without you know necessarily thinking about it. And we're sort of like at the finish line. And... Um, you know, we just got it to keep on going. Even if it does feel like we're carrying this thing, it's like, you know, you're carrying the baton when you're in a race and we are almost at the very, very end of whatever that is. And we really need to keep going. We're getting closer to, to like who we have become. And we're going to get to meet who that person is, who we've become as a result of this situation that we have, or, or relationship uh, circumstance, living condition, job, whatever, something that's coming to an end, some phase that's never going to be the same again, some event or again, relationship connection, it's never going to be the same again. It's changing or coming to a complete end. And so we are changing or something, you know, about us is coming to a complete end too. And we're going to get to meet the new us very, very soon. Um, you know, like the, the, our deepest levels and come to a new understanding about ourselves in a very short time. And um, it might not be something that you, again, that you see. It could be very subconscious. So if you feel like, well, I haven't seen any like progress. It doesn't look like my life is going anywhere. Um, that That's not really the case, but especially me thinking about the fact that one of our overall energies was also the devil. That feeling of stuckness is legitimate. 
It could be tied to one of the retrogrades, perhaps. And it's up to you to try to figure out, like, what is it that's blocking me? What's standing in my way? Is it me? You know, where am I stuck? How am I stuck? And then what you can do to get unstuck. Okay. See, I was just worried that I was going to go off on like a whole tangent or something because I can do that. Y'all know that. All right. So um, fire signs this week, your card is, oh, you got a nice one. It is the Knight of Cups in reverse. So Knight of Cups is perhaps a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, someone likened to those traits or attributes could be somebody who's returning to your life, maybe because of Juno going direct. I don't know. Um, but that's what he can mean for me. And also it can be about if you're meeting somebody new, even in terms of love, completely swept off your feet, something very unexpected happening in the area of love and relationships. And maybe meeting somebody who just, you know, knocks your socks off, as they say, or again, an ex coming back or, or something like that, totally unexpected. And you're just like, wow, um, that can definitely happen. But in a more, um, general sense, this card means that things tend to be going well and positive and, you know, any and every, whatever aspect of your life um, that this night may be touching. And nobody's going to complain about that. But like the Knight of, um, the Knight of Wands, like the Ten of Wands and the world in reverse, you could feel as if you're being pulled in several different directions. You've got tons on your plate and you may need to prioritize some things. Um, so that was Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Your card is similar. It's the eight of cups in reverse. And this also means that, um, things are about to get, if they haven't already started to, you know, get better for you, the good times are ahead. And then the, they're in the near future. They lie like just ahead of you. So like, um, again, going back to this 10 of wands, like this, this marks an ending, like this time where you're going to feel overwhelmed and burdened and stuff like that is coming to an end. Better times, um, maybe more relaxed times, better financial times, better times in general, emotional, having to do with relationship. Um, they lie ahead of you. Now talking specifically about some of those things, if your gut solar plexus or Juno direct, maybe <laughs> now that we learned that is telling you that you need to get out of a relationship or a job, a living condition. Um, I don't know wherever this place is that you feel stuck. Um, and even, even like the, the small things, if you just feel like you're in some sort of prison of your mind, like I can't make any, I can't even make the slightest small decision. You may need to take baby steps and just starting to get, take back control of your life by, you know, deciding what's for dinner tonight, like something, you know, very, very small, but you just could feel like you're losing control, um, with the eight of cups in reverse too. So something, again, the positive things, very, very near lying ahead of you. Um, but if you're getting those gut feelings, you should, you know, take heed to them, trust yourself, trust your intuition, uh, think about it, maybe weigh the pros and cons, prioritize, but, um, it's hard to say to think about it and, and, you know, good, but without, and at the same time, warn you not to overthink, but be careful about getting too caught up in like, yeah, Mercurian, a head, a Mercurian headset, um, it's a look before you leap sort of thing. So yeah, that, that's the best I can say. But um, if you're feeling that way, you may want to just go. Um, air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This is our card. It's in reverse too. Isn't that funny? Reverse, reverse, reverse. Um, wasn't there a song like that? Reverse. I think it's one of these party songs. I can't remember what it was though. Is it the cha-cha slide? I don't know. Uh, anyway, the queen of pentacles. I, I, I know I'm, I'm kind of random. Uh, I understand. I apologize. The queen of pentacles is a Taurus, perhaps. Um, Taurus. Virgo or Capricorn. 
or someone likened to those traits or attributes. She can be an actual person. Whenever a court card shows up, it could very well represent an actual person in your life. Maybe this might be an actual female in your life, perhaps a little bit older, very matronly, motherly, like somebody you can look up to, a mentor, a uh, female mentor type, maybe your actual mom or mother figure or something like that. When we get deep into it and possibly into the weeds, it goes into a whole thing about her perhaps being a dark haired woman specifically and, and all of that. Um, more importantly, she points to matters of the home, right? She's home, she's hearth. So it's not just the actual home, the physical home. You know like that saying home is where the heart is? So it's like whatever, wherever you feel at home or whatever home means to you is what she's here to remind you or to encourage you this week to pay particular attention to. So, um, something, you know, potentially could be getting away from you with, in terms of the home, like there may be a deadline where you got to do something by, um, or where you wanted to do something by, I wanted to do my spring cleaning on this day or by this day because it's so-and-so's birthday the week after, and I'm not going to have time. You know, it's that sort of thing. Um, or I wanted to or needed to complete some sort of application or pay a particular bill or, or something, um, you know, like home kind of business that she's reminding you you likely have. Um, and it doesn't have to be like paperwork and stuff. It can be, um, well, again, whatever home means to you. So there could be some relationship stuff or people in your household or people that you can, home is where the heart is. So, you know, your romantic interest is something, something, you know, you may need to pay particular attention to them and your relationship and to nurture those things, right? She's the queen of pentacles is a, is a, is a nurturer, um, at the end of the day. All right. Um. Water signs, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Oh, that's in your element too. A lot. Wait a minute. One, two, three of them are in your element. That's interesting. Um, and the other one is in Earth. So maybe this is about the Pluto in Capricorn transit. Maybe this is from where this energy is coming from. In any case, your card is the four of cups in reverse. And when this shows up, it means stop it with the, oh, woe is me. This is not a time for, oh, woe is me. This is not a time for, um, you know, if only this, and if that hadn't happened, I would, you know, be this and all those, so like you got to start from somewhere. So if it's your diet, if it's your job, if it's your relationship, if it's the fact that you're single and you want a relationship, whatever it is, you got to start from somewhere. So start from here, start from today, start from tomorrow, start from whatever day, you know, you look at the card and you decide, you know what, I'm going to get started. That's what it's encouraging you to do. It's big, it's saying it's time to get moving on and you fill in the blank of whatever the on is. All right. Um, also, it's always a reminder uh, to count your blessings, right? That, you know, like there's so many things that the world, the universe, God is always constantly offering you, you know, and you have um, more than you realize sometime. And we, we all get like this and we forget, you know, we don't consider how very blessed we are. But when this card shows up, it asks that you do consider that. Um, tempted to do something weird. Yeah, I'm going to do a whole change of plans. In terms of this person that may come back to our lives, and it's going to have to be whether you're single, coupled, whatever, somebody coming back into your life. And since this is the general reading, it might not be a romantic person returning to your life. I just want to see like what kind of person. And we all know who's left from our life that maybe we want to return or... Um, that we expect to return, that we don't want to return. So we're keeping our eye out on them. And I'm just tempted to see if we can, um, maybe we'll get a court card uh, or we'll look for a court card or a major arcana or both that will clue us in on, if not the actual element as in Zodiac of the person, but their type, like what we can, you know, the kind of the type of person, then you can figure out who it is in your life, right? 
we all could figure out in our life. So the first card is the Six of Pentacles. So it's not a court card. Uh, Six of Pentacles in reverse. So this is a card that talks about um, whether it's upright or in reverse, the uh, our ability to both give and receive. It's a, sixes in general on their own are about equity and equality and love. And um, so this card is very much about a, the exchange of unconditional love. And you see the scales of balance here. It's very Venus. All of her signs tend to be represented in, in the card, you know, for any given deck or whatever. Um, my favorite might be the Angel Tarot, Six of Pentacles. Uh, in any case, um, so since it's in reverse, somebody, the person, or you, some in the, the situation involves somebody where um, in the relationship, one person always felt like they were doing more than the other, or one person felt like the other person was doing more than them. Like, so the person that that may or may not have been doing more, they, they may have been just fine. Like maybe they had more money, for example, than the other person. And they may have just been fine with that. But the person with the lesser was the one that was bothered. That's a possibility too. So it's like either, again, one person feels like they were doing everything and, you know, just far more than the other person. And so it was not an equitable relationship. It was not reciprocal. Or... Um, one person feels like they weren't enough, like they were inadequate. And so that's the type of person or situation. Yeah. Now we have the nine of pentacles in reverse. So again, it was like, it was mismatched in that sense. One was this very um, um, together, that way, successful, of you know, uh, very classy and, and you know, regal-like, and the other, not so much so. So it was like turned upside down. It was, out, it was out of balance, or at least it was, they felt it was out of balance. All right. Um, so that led to conflict or to one or both being conflicted about like where they stood with each other. And you see this guy, he's holding two swords in his hand, the two of swords is about wanting to choose something like your heart guiding you to choose something. But because you, because it's like, you feel that there's a mismatch, or you're worried that there's a mismatch or that other people will see or feel that there's a mismatch that you're afraid to make a decision. It's when we want to choose something and we've probably got it made up in our mind exactly what we want to choose. But in the back of our mind, we're thinking about like, what would society say? What would mom say? What would dad say? What would the kids say? What would my friends say? What would the job say? You know, what would the boss say? It's like, so I can't choose what I really want because that's not the, the, um, that, that, that's not the decision that looks good on paper or whatever. You know what I mean? So this is about being conflicted, although you really kind of know what you want, just afraid to take it. So that could have been involved in whatever reason you guys separated. And now things have improved for one or both. And it's like your ships are coming in. This is very near on the horizon. So it will require a little bit more patience for this last wand to come up. But we're almost there. So the same way we saw here, like we're almost there. We're almost, all these cards, we're talking about being almost there. And now this one's no different. Okay, here, finally, it is a, um, a major arcana card. This is a major arcana card, um, 14, temperance in the traditional tarot, which represents the sign of Sagittarius. So I talked about Jupiter being retrograde in, I mean, um, yeah, retrograde in Capricorn. Um, this represents the planet Jupiter and the sign of Sagittarius, which it rules. But for me, it also always brings in Aquarian energy because I see a water bearer here. I see an angel pouring water between two vessels while standing in a pool of water. That's a water bearer. So although in the tarot, this card traditionally represents the sign of Sagittarius for me, I always see Aquarius as well. 
So the person may be an Aquarius, may be a Sagittarius or someone, you know, like likened to those traits or attributes of those signs specifically. With the Aquarian energy, it could be somebody freedom seeking, like wanting to be more independent and but they just hadn't been there. Um, temperance is also an energy that shows up to to help um, two people or to more people to come to sort of like a come to Jesus moment, as they say, like meeting of the minds. How can we collaborate? How can we look past our differences? So how can we get beyond the conflict that we had? It doesn't matter like if you're, you know, I'm black and I'm white. Like, how can we come together and make those two things work together? Maybe we'll turn out gray. Maybe we'll turn out striped. Maybe we'll turn out polka dotted. But like, how can we how can we get it to come together? Temperance is about that, too. So, again, if there was some sort of differences that one, you know, it was out of balance or one felt that it was out of balance because one had more money or one was older or more popular or whatever the case was, the temperance will show them um, how they can complement each other nonetheless. The seven of swords is about feet. And look, this the two swords again. Now the two swords are sticking in the ground. And we have the five, the five of swords that we saw before. He's holding on to all of them now. Um, but the Seven of Swords in terms of relationships can be about, again, somebody returning to your life. It's also a card of fear. Very much um, like this energy of not, you know, making sure that you um, don't cost yourself opportunities by um, by just being afraid to go out and, and, and like grab life by the balls, basically. So that may have been involved. And again, there was a fear very likely that led to the person being conflicted or a per one of the one or both in the relationship being conflicted and maybe even having conflict with to each other because one or both couldn't make a decision that they really wanted to make that was in their heart to make because they were too concerned with what other people might think about that decision. A Gemini may be involved. Maybe that's why all the um, swords. Um, but then the magician, he has all the elements available to him. And this is somebody that was like turned upside down. So it could be somebody, if they're not a, not specifically a Gemini, it could also be some somebody who was very um, talented. Like they had all the information they needed. They have the, the very strong intuition. They're you know capable of doing things, but they like. They counted themselves out. They robbed themselves of an opportunity like the Seven of Swords. Sometimes in terms of um, the Zodiac, I attach the magician to the mutable signs in general. So then that would be not just Gemini, but also Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. Um, because the mutable signs have the ability to take on the you know traits and attributes of any of the other signs. And then it's just like Gemini can do it to the second power, <laughs> right? Because we're, we're two. Speaking of Gemini, now we have the Page of Swords in reverse. So I really could stop here. Um, definitely could be a Gemini involved. That could be why the Page is showing up or Gemini type. Or for somebody or some of you, um, the problems could have come like around the time of Mercury retrograde. And that would be what this is showing me here with the page of swords in reverse. One person may be younger than the other. <laughs> page of wands in reverse. So again, Sagittarius, possibly Leo, Aries, maybe a younger one, maybe even a Scorpio. Um, which is in part ruled by Mars. And the Queen of Swords 
So I said I was going to pull it out looking for one court card. We've seen a few now, too. Now we have the Queen of Swords. But then we, after the pages, we have the Queen. So we, it is very possible, again, this like a um, very commanding presence, very independent, um, again, together, probably professional, secure female, and maybe, um, maybe a younger male fire sign or air sign or Scorpio who just couldn't get it together because of those differences. I don't know even what made me do this. I should stop there. Well, victory is ahead. Okay. So just like I'll, I'll, on this note, I'll stop. Um, after all of that, there is again, positivity ahead, which is what we saw in all of these other cards too. Their victory is very near. Um, Better times are very near. Better relationships are very near. This, you know, we're coming out of a phase. And on that note, there's our world in reverse. They talked about that. So I moved into a weird, <laughs> weird energy here with the, uh, or behavior with the reading. But I think I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to do any other spreads. I'll just do some advice. And then I'll come back with love. Let's look for one from the other deck. There we go. Okay. Let it go, says Quan Yin for the masculine. So something onto which we're holding, and it could be emotions or it could be an actual situation, whatever it is, let it go. Um, if it's the, the burdens that you're carrying or like, again, the too much stuff on your plate, let some of those go. Find some time to be, to enjoy yourself or to be social, to relax, whatever it is you need to do. Uh, feminine for us, follow your heart. Don't follow the two of swords and worry about what other people have to say about what you want to do. Follow your heart in your decisions this week and always, but this week in particular, um, masculine, the ace of winter. So some a new opportunity, maybe involving an air sign or air sign type, perhaps. Um, and even if it's not with the ace of swords, it's about like after difficulty, stressful time, even possibly a new beginning. So, um, as opposed to like the ace of cups, which is only, you know, uh, sugar and spice and everything nice, the ace of swords, sometimes we're still going to encounter again, while we need some fa uh, patience, while the next phase plays, you know, comes and plays out, we may still have some more bumps in the road that we have to encounter and tackle, but it's a new beginning nonetheless that we're going to get. Also some truth may be coming out about something, um, and clarity. And then ultimately, the Ace of Swords is a card of victory. It's because you made it through whatever that difficult time is, and now you stand here, you know, you know, ready to begin again. That's a major victory. Implementation of your brilliant new idea may get off to a rocky start, but keep going. The challenges will help you to refine your plan and to reshape your goals into something even better. That's for you, masculine and feminine. For us, it is the Two of Spring, the Two of Wands. This is about partnership. Uh, it is about the need for faith in manifesting things. So with the magician in reverse, for example, we're not using our, our powers, our manifestation power to our advantage. And, you know, maybe because there's been a lack of faith in ourselves um, or in manifesting in prayer and in focused intentions and stuff, period. But the, the two shows up to remind us th of the power that we do have and then how we just, you know, focus on things and believe um, that they're coming in order to receive them. Also, it is about partnership and it is the divine union or twin flame card of the tarot. So it could definitely be about um, soulmate relationships too and things like that. But I was just talking about a focused intention and that reminds me that the overall energy for the Keepers of the Light Oracle was again, Diana, focused intention. 
Think about what you desire. Set your sights high and expect the best possible outcome. So I think that that's what this um, two of spring or two of wands is also showing up to say to the feminine. Your vision, creativity, and dedication to your cause have brought you great success. In fact, it may be in your best interest to get a partner to assist you in your endeavors or to expand the number of people who are helping you. Um, from the angel tarot to the masculine, major arcana card 12, awakening or the hanged man. So there's some sort of limbo right now, something hanging the balance. There's a pause, there's inaction. Um, things will pick up again soon. A Pisces may be involved. Look at things from a different perspective. You're at a temporary standstill. It's important to be yourself. So it's important to be yourself is the key. And to, while you have this pause, this break, to think about what you really want. Again, your desires so that when time picks back up, you can pursue them. You can go after them. You know exactly what to do. Use this time to make your plan. Feminine, for uh, us, a new beginning of sorts is coming. Major Arcana card zero, the dreamer or the fool, is all about a brand new path we never walked before. And in this particular deck, this card has always felt like Mercury to me. Could be in part about the fact that Mercury is entering Cancer, right, this week. That could be why it's showing up. So a new beginning, perhaps in our relationships, um, like Mercury and Cancer promises to do, to make it easier for us to communicate and to share our feelings and things. And maybe that will enable us to take a leap of faith and to follow our dreams, our dreams and our heart, because that leads to unexpected opportunities or unexpected opportunities are popping up, things, that we, <laughs> things we wouldn't expect to happen and we're getting swept off our feet. And what are we gonna do when that happens? Lastly, for the masculine, Lady Portia, Divine Order. Um, this is like a Queen of Swords too, very Libra, Justice, <clears throat> Ace of Swords even. Do what you feel is right. An important lesson is unfolding. So again, this is about doing what you feel is right, doing what's in your heart to do or what's in your mind to do, not necessarily what someone else or something else would have you do. And lastly, for the feminine, Cloak of Wisdom. You already know the answer you seek. Trust what you know. And this is what I was saying too. Like, like we already know what we want. We already know what we desire, but we, we're afraid to actually choose that because of, again, worried about outside influences. So this week, don't do that. <laughs> Hope you guys have enjoyed the general. I will be back with the love reading. Namaste.